human beings have always lived in societies and as members of their societies they have pondered about their nature this is like saying that human beings have their own bodies and they always had some idea of organism the knowledge about different parts of the body its anatomy and its working or physiology developed as a special discipline much later thus scientific knowledge about our body and other things around us developed along with new methods of acquiring the same this method began to be called the scientific method now we try to get knowledge about society its working its modifications and changes through a scientific method in bringing scientific approach to the study of society the king played an important part so we try to know what he did and how he did it Ivan Dakin is best remembered for his efforts in making sociology accepted as an autonomous academic discipline. He won recognition for the idea of a science of society which could contribute to the study of moral and intellectual problems of modern society. While discussing Dakin's conception of sociology, we shall focus on three important aspects. general conditions for establishment of social science sociology as a study of social facts and the sociological method after you complete this lesson you will be able to locate the characteristics of science identify the basis for defining social facts point out how sociology is different from some other subjects of study describe the types of society classify social facts list the rules of observation of social facts identify the rules for explaining facts general conditions for the establishment of social science sociology was just emerging as a distinctive discipline in darkheim's lifetime to the vast majority of educated people including scholars in the universities sociology was just a name When Darkeen was a student at the Ecole Normale, there was not a single professorship in sociology in France. It was only in 1887 that the first chair in social science was created for Darkeen by the French government at the University of Bordeaux. It was many years later that he received the title of professor of sociology at Sorbonne in Paris. given the existing situation that came was explicitly concerned with outlining the nature and scope of sociology that he considered social sciences to be distinct from natural sciences because social sciences dealt with human relationships however the method used in the natural sciences could be used in the social sciences as well He was concerned with examining the nature of sociology as a social science distinct from philosophy and psychology. Philosophy is concerned with ideas and conceptions whereas science is concerned with objective realities. Philosophy is the source from where all sciences have emerged as you can see in the following figure. In his book Monstrecki and Rossi published in 1892 that he laid down the general conditions for the establishment of a social science which also apply to sociology let us look at them science he pointed out is not coextensive with human knowledge or thought not every type of question the mind can formulate can be tested by science It is possible for something to be the object of the philosopher or artist and not necessarily the stuff of science at all. Thus, science deals with a specified area or a subject matter of its own, not with total knowledge. Science must have a definite field to explore. Science is concerned with things, objective realities. 
for social science to exist it must have a definite subject matter philosophers darkey points out have been aware of things called laws traditions religion and so on but the reality of these was in a large measure dissolved by their insistence on dealing with these as manifestations of human will inquiry was thus concentrated on the internal will rather than upon external bodies of data so it is important to look things as they appear in this world science does not describe individuals but types or classes of subject matter if human societies be classified then they help us in arriving at general rules and discover regularities of behavior social science which classifies the various human societies describes the normal form of social life in each type of society for the simple reason that it describes the type itself whatever pertains to the type is normal and whatever is normal is healthy the subject matter of a science is general principles or laws if societies were not subject to regularities no social science would be possible darkin further points out that since the principle that all the phenomena of the universe are closely interrelated has been found to be true in the other domains of nature it is also valid for human societies which are a part of nature in putting forth the idea that there is a continuity of the natural and social worlds Darkeem has been strongly influenced by Comte. Although there is continuity between the natural and social worlds, the social is as distinctive and autonomous a sphere of subject matter as either the biological or the physical. Darkeem was very much against the view held by some scholars that everything in society should be reduced to the human volition. Categories of human will and volition he points out belongs to psychology not social science if social science is really to exist societies must be assumed to have a certain nature which results from the nature and arrangement of the elements composing them finally to discern the uniformities types and laws of society we need a method the methods of science applicable in the field of the natural sciences are valid within the social field the criteria of a social science which darkeem set forth at the beginning of his first published work remain to the end of his life the fundamental criteria of social science and the identifying attributes of the field he called sociology sociology as a study of social facts in defining the subject matter of sociology two tasks are involved defining the total field of study and defining the sort of thing which will be found in this field in his book the rules of sociological method published in 1895 darkeem is concerned with the second task and calls social facts the subject matter of sociology darkeem defines social facts as ways of acting thinking and feeling external to the individual and endowed with the power of coercion by reason of which they control him to darkeem society is a reality sui generis society comes into being by the association of individuals hence society represents a specific reality which has its own characteristics this unique reality of society is separate from other realities studied by physical or biological sciences further societal reality is apart from individuals and is over and above them thus the reality of society must be the subject matter of sociology a scientific understanding of any social phenomenon must emerge from the collective or associational characteristics manifest in the social structure of society while working towards this end darkeem developed and made use of a variety of sociological concepts Collective representations is one of the leading concepts to be found in the social thought of Turkey. Before learning about collective representations, 
it is necessary that you understand what that he meant by social facts. Social facts that he based his scientific vision of sociology on the fundamental principle, that is, the objective reality of social facts. Social fact is that way of acting, thinking, or feeling, etc. It is more or less general in a given society. Durkheim treated social facts as things. They are real and exist independent of the individual's will or desire. They are external to individuals and are capable of exerting constraint upon them. In other words, they are coercive in nature. Further, social facts exist in their own right. They are independent of individual manifestations. The true nature of social facts lies in the collective or associational characteristics inherent in society. Legal codes and customs, moral rules, religious beliefs and practices, language, etc. are all social facts. Types of social facts Durkheim saw social facts as lying along a continuum. First, on one extreme are structural or morphological social phenomena. They make up the substratum of collective life. By this, he meant the number and nature of elementary parts of which society is composed, the way in which the morphological constituents are arranged, and the degree to which they are fused together. In this category of social facts are included the distribution of population over the surface of the territory, the forms of dwellings, nature of communication system, etc. Secondly, there are institutionalized forms of social facts. They are more or less general and widely spread in society. They represent the collective nature of the society as a whole. Under this category fall legal and moral rules religious dogma and established beliefs and practices prevalent in a society. Thirdly, there are social facts which are not institutionalized. Such social facts have not yet acquired crystallized forms. They lie beyond the institutionalized norms of society. Also, this category of social facts have not attained a total objective and independent existence comparable to the institutionalized ones. Also, their externality to and ascendancy over and above individuals is not yet complete. These social facts have been termed as social currents. For example, sporadic currents of opinion generated in specific situations, enthusiasm generated in a crowd, transitory outbreaks in an assembly of people, sense of indignity or pity aroused by specific incidents, etc. All the above-mentioned social facts form a continuum and constitute social meaning of society. Further, Durkheim made an important distinction in terms of normal and pathological social facts. A social fact is normal when it is generally encountered in a society of a certain type at a certain phase in its evolution. Every deviation from the standard is a pathological fact. For example, some degree of crime is inevitable in any society. Hence, according to Durkheim, crime to that extent is a normal fact. However, an extraordinary increase in the rate of crime is pathological. A general weakening in the moral condemnation of crime and certain type of economic crisis leading to anarchy in society are other examples of pathological facts. Main characteristics of social facts In Durkheim's view, sociology as an objective science must conform to the model of the other sciences. He posed two requirements. First, the subject of sociology must be specific and it must be distinguished from the subjects of all other sciences. Secondly, the subject of sociology must be such as to be observed and explained. Similar to the way in which facts are observed and explained in other sciences. For Durkheim, the subject of sociology is the social fact and that social facts must be regarded as things. The main characteristics of social facts are externality, constraint, independence and generality. 
Social facts, according to Durkheim, exist outside individual consciences. Their existence is external to the individuals. For example, domestic or civic or contractual obligations are defined externally to the individual in laws and customs. Religious beliefs and practices exist outside and prior to the individual. An individual takes birth in a society and leaves it after birth death. However, social facts are already given in society and remain in existence irrespective of birth or death of an individual. For example, language continues to function independently of any single individual. The other characteristic of social fact is that it exercises a constraint on individuals. Social fact is recognized because it forces itself on the individual. For example, the institutions of law, education, beliefs, etc. are already given to everyone from without. They are commanding and obligatory for all. There is constraint when in a crowd a feeling or thinking imposes itself on everyone. Such a phenomenon is typically social because its basis, its subject is the group as a whole and not one individual in particular. A social fact is that which has more or less a general occurrence in a society. Also it is independent of the personal features of individuals or universal attributes of human nature. Examples are the beliefs, feelings and practices of the group taken collectively. In sum, the social fact is specific. It is born of the association of individuals. It represents a collective content of social group or society. It differs in kind from what occurs in individual consciousness. Social facts can be subjected to categorization and classification. Above all, social facts form the subject matter of the science of sociology. Externality and constraint. We shall examine the criteria of externality and constraint in some detail. There are two related senses in which social facts are external to the individual. First, every individual is born into an ongoing society which already has a definite organization or structure. There are values, norms, beliefs and practices which the individual finds ready-made at birth and which he learns through the process of socialization. Since these social phenomena exist way out to the individual and have an objective reality, they are external to the individual. Secondly, Social facts are external to the individual in the sense that any one individual is only a single element within the totality of relationships which constitutes a society. These relationships are not the creation of any single individual, but are constituted by multiple interactions between individuals. To understand the relationship between the individuals and the society, the king draws a parallel to the relationship between chemical elements and the substances, which are composed of combinations of them. According to Durkheim, whenever any elements combine and thereby produce by the fact of their combination new phenomena, it is plain that these new phenomena reside not in the original elements but in the totality formed by their union. A living cell consists of metal parts like atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. Just as society is composed of individuals, just as the living beings are more important than their parts, the whole society is greater than the collection of parts individuals. The whole society differs from individual manifestations of it. We must have seen quite often in daily life that there is a difference between individuals and the group. Especially when demands are made by a group, individually members may agree on a thing but collectively they may not. In wider society, we find a number of rules of behavior which reside exclusively in the very society itself, which produces them and not in its parts, that is, its members. In putting forward this criterion, Durkheim wanted to show that social facts are distinct from individual or psychological facts. Therefore, their study should be conducted in an 
autonomous discipline independent of psychology that is sociology the second criterion by which social facts are defined is the moral constraint they exercise on the individual when the individual attempts to resist social facts they assert themselves the assertion may range from a mild ridicule to social isolation and moral and legal sanction however in most circumstances individuals conform to social facts and therefore do not consciously feel their constraining character this conformity is not so much due to the fear of sanctions being applied as the acceptance of the legitimacy of the social facts darkin concedes that to define the social in terms of constraint and coercion is to risk shocking the zealous partisans of absolute individualism it is generally accepted today however that most of our ideas and our tendencies are not developed by ourselves but have come to us from without how can they become a part of us except by imposing themselves upon us darkin put forward his view to counter the utilitarian view point which was prevalent during his time that society could be held together and there would be greatest happiness if each individual worked in his self interest darkin did not agree individual's interest and society's interest do not coincide for social order it was necessary for society to exercise some control or pressure over its members to confirm the coerciveness of social facts and their effects on individuals darkin looks at education efforts to impose on the child ways of seeing feeling and acting which he could not have arrived at spontaneously the aim of education is precisely the socialization of human being parents and teachers are merely the representatives and intermediaries of the social milieu which tends to fashion him in its own image darkin adds that social facts cannot be defined merely by their universality thus a thought or movement repeated by all individuals is not thereby a social fact what is important is the corporate or collective aspects of the beliefs tendencies and practices of a group that characterize truly social phenomena what is more these social phenomena are transmitted through the collective means of socialization thus social facts can be recognized because they are external to the individuals on the one hand and are capable of exercising coercion over them on the other since they are external they are also general and because they are collective they can be imposed on the individuals who form a given society the sociological method having defined the subject matter of sociology darkin describes the method to study it the sociological method rests firmly on the experience of biology which had emerged by then as a science of living beings rules for the observation of social facts the first rule that darkin gives us is consider social facts as things social facts are real however instead of being dealt with as things as concrete realities worthy of direct attention and study they have been dealt with by other writers in the light of concepts or notions this is true of all sciences before they emerge as disciplines thought and reflection precede science the pre-scientific stage is broken by the introduction of the empirical method and not by conceptual discussion alone this is perhaps even more important in social science than in natural science because there is a strong tendency to treat social facts as either lacking in substantive reality as creations of the individual will or on the contrary as already only known words like democracy socialism etc are freely used as if they denoted precisely known facts whereas actually they awaken in us nothing but confused ideas a tangle of vague impressions prejudices and emotions to counter these tendencies darkin said that social facts must be treated as things as things they have to be studied by the empirical method and not direct intuition and also they cannot be modified by a simple effort of the will 
by studying social facts as things the following three rules have to be followed in order to be objective all preconceptions must be eradicated sociologists must emancipate themselves from the commonplace ideas that dominate the mind of the lay person and adopt an emotionally neutral attitude towards what they set out to investigate sociologists have to formulate the concepts precisely at the outset of the research the sociologists are likely to have very little knowledge of the phenomenon in question therefore they must proceed by conceptualizing their subject matter in terms of those properties which are external enough to be observed thus in division of labor the type of solidarity in a society can be perceived by looking at the type of law repressive or restitutive criminal or civil which is dominant in the society when sociologists undertake the investigation of some order of social facts they must consider them from an aspect that is independent of their individual manifestations the objectivity of social facts depends on their being separated from individual facts which express them social facts provide a common standard for members of the society social facts exist in the form of legal rules moral regulations proverbs social conventions etc it is these that sociologists must study to gain an understanding of social life social facts are seen in currents of opinion which vary according to time and place impel certain groups either to more marriages for example or to more suicide or to a higher or lower birth rate etc these currents are plain social facts at first sight they seem inseparable from the forms they take in individual cases however statistics furnish us with the means of isolating them they are in fact represented with considerable exactness by the rates of births marriages and suicides social currents are theoretical variables while statistical rates are the means of obtaining verification for propositions referring to these variables recognizing the fact that social currents are not observable he insists the devices of method must be introduced in order that empirical verification be made possible it must be noted here that the case of the suicide rates is the best example given by the team of the way in which social facts can be studied conclusion darkin clearly considered sociology to be an independent scientific discipline with its distinct subject matter he distinguished it from psychology he identified social facts laid down rules for their observation and explanation he stressed on social facts being explained through other social facts for him explanation meant the study of functions and causes the causes could be derived through the use of the comparative method he demonstrated the nature of these studies through the study of division of labor in different types of solidarities of suicide rates in different types of societies and the study of religion in a single time his life and works are regarded as a sustained effort at laying the legitimate base of sociology as a discipline further it follows the empiricist method which is valid in the natural sciences biology in particular observation classification and explanation through the help of laws arrived by means of the comparative method